the left side of the fairway here at 13. Again, an uphill approach, 116 yards. Almost impossible to leave it below the hole. It's just five paces, and there's a little bit of a down ramp just in the front of the screen. But if anybody can do it, it's Rom. He hits it, hits it super high. Yeah, it's up in the stratosphere, now comes down on the green. Oh, that spins May with a chance to go in for a two. It's trickling to the hole, and it's right on the edge. Oh, it's one roll from beating the Eagle, two as it is. A kick in birdie, and John Rahm goes back to back, and he's 16 under par. Would that have changed things here on the back nine? Wow, John Rahm, who made that double bogey at four, and it looked to, at that point, take himself out of the tournament early in the day bounce back with birdie it's five and eagle at six almost made another one one inch away it's on the edge of it it's gonna be an easy birdie to get back to 16 under and dj not in yet at 20 under first par yeah and i promise you john rom thinks he can still win this tournament he's thinking if i birdie every hole coming in i will win the tournament and he has that kind of ability for sure let's go back to bill Great second shot here at 12 for Xander Shoffley. Just five feet uphill for birdie. Can close the gap to just two shots if this goes in. Butterblade back behind the ball. Gives it a tap up to the cup. Walks that home. Back-to-back -back birdies for Xander Shoffley. He's to 18 under. You're listening to exclusive coverage of the Tour Championship, the final event of the FedEx Cup playoffs, from historic East Lake Golf Club in Atlanta, Georgia. And as we do at the top and bottom of every hour in our live play-by-play -play coverage, time now for a leaderboard update brought to you by MasterCard. Tap and go with your MasterCard, the simple, secure way to pay. As Tour Championships being tighter and tighter over the last hour and a half or so, and now it's a two-shot lead for Dustin Johnson. Xander Shoffley to make it 12. He's now 18 under. DJ not in yet at 20 under, Bill. Dustin Johnson now par putt here at number 12. Just inside four feet and straight uphill, and he walked that home. Good two putt for DJ, but his lead over his playing partner, just two shots. DJ is 20 under. 20 under, two-shot lead over Shoffley alongside of him and up ahead. Justin Thomas trying to get within two, Doug Bell. Here at 13, putting through his shadow, Justin Thomas, 11 feet, aiming outside right, looking for it to come back to the left. The stroke sends it online, making the turn, curl into the hole, and it curled a little late. Made that coil around the back of the cup. So a miss from 11 feet for Justin Thomas. He stays at 17 under. Four, actually make that five consecutive pars for Justin Thomas. Three back with five to play for JT John Rahm. Hanging in, 16 under, four back with five to go. Colin Morikawa sits at 15 under par. A great rookie season finishing up this week. And today for Scotty Scheffler, four under, four to play. He's at 13 under, solo sixth. Patrick Reed has finished his final round of the season with a fine 65, gets him to 11 under par and a tie for seventh at two under players. Uh, one of those players has also finished a one-time winner on tour this year, Sebastian Munoz, shot four under par 66. He's at 11, and Rory McIlroy still got three holes to play, having a good closing round. The new daddy is three under par through 15, tied, at seven, uh, tied for seventh at that 11 under score. And let's go over to Doug. The Corn Ferry Tour visited Panther Creek Country Club in Springfield, Illinois last week for the fifth annual Lincoln Land Championship presented by LRS. And yesterday, 29-year-old Brett Druitt of Australia won for the first time in 116 starts. Next up on the path to the PGA Tour is the Evans Scholars Invitational beginning Thursday just outside Chicago. While on PGA Tour Champions, the chase for the Charles Schwab Cup visits Sioux Falls, South Dakota for the Sanford International beginning on Friday. Yeah, just a quick update. We talked about Dustin Johnson had missed five fairways in a row that hit that iron in the fairway on 12 or on 13. He's hit it in the left rough, and that's going to be really a hard spot to get to that front left hole location. Almost impossible to get it close. When there's big leads, we're always watching to see, can anyone get within two? And now we have Xander Shoffley within two and DJ with another missed fairway. Mark Carnival. At the difficult par 414th, Colin Morikawa missed the fairway left fairway and just settle on the edge of the fairway, maybe 20 yards short of the green. 
So he's going to pay the price. He got two birdies in a row to get it to 18 under. DJ's in the left rough, no club in hand yet. Mark, I would echo those statements about, uh, you know, when we went from uh, uh, the RBC Heritage and then off to Connecticut for Travelers and what was going on then, there were a lot of scribes saying, oh, it's not going to work. It worked. The tour's done a heck of a job. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Bill. You know, Shoffley's uh, shot you were describing was very intelligent because uh, he had no chance to get it on the green with that tree. Now he's got a good angle for a pitch, but this is a shot coming up, Bill, for Dustin Johnson that's going to be really tough. I would expect this to just be played in the middle of the green, front left hole location. He's going to run this up, and that is not going to make the putting surface. So uh, I didn't think he had many tree limbs in front of him. There might have been some branches. He couldn't go right at the flag, so he plays it out short right of the green as well. You know, I, I didn't think so either, Bill, but he did, and I could tell by the way he tried to keep that low. The good news is they both got great angles. The bad news is it's going to be a lot of work to get it up and down. Back to Mark Carnival now. The good thing at 14 for Colin Marcow is the bogey putt is uphill. This from five feet, just to drop one shot here at 14. Marcow put her in behind the ball. Put away up to the cup and in. So he dropped one shot here for Colin Morikawa. He'll drop back to 14 under with a bogey here at 14. Yeah, that may end any hopes he has of winning, but I'll tell you what, uh, there'll be a lot of players drop one stroke on 14. Yeah, even after great drives. I mean, you're still outside 220 coming in to this brutal par 4, Doug. Yeah, and Justin Thomas wanted to find the fairway, and so he went three wood off the tee. Found a little flat area, a little shelf out there in the middle of the fairway, so 223 to the hole. Uh, the key is just getting it somewhere on the dance floor, and JT's numbers have been sterling today. Missed only one fairway up to this point. And here comes the shot, trying to carve it in there from left to right. Does just that, lands in the center of the green, then rolls out past the hole on the left side. That's a really good play for Justin Thomas. Spectacular outside, 25 feet. Let's go back a hole to Bill. Yeah, I'm here at 13, Doug, and third shot for Xander Shoffley. He's got 31 yards, put his tee shot in the right rough, couldn't get it on the green. It's this up in the air, and boy, that just that got, maybe got a little flippy with that shot. That did not release, that landed softly, and he's well outside 20 feet for par. That's exactly what it looked like. He looked like he decelled a bit and tried to save it at the end. I think that's a product of not wanting at all to get above the hole, and as it is, he barely got it on the green. And he's going to have a long one to save par, Mark Carnival. Coming off back-to-back -back birdies, John Rahm at 16 under. Now plays his second shot here at the difficult par for 14th from the left first cutter rough. 220 yards oh, to this back right hole location. Wind is in a little bit off the left. Oh, no, really difficult on. to get this ball close to the on. hole as Brown makes contact trying to get this ball. And that lands left of the greenside bunker and then kicks back to the right end of the bunker. That's about pin high, but that is going to be a long bunker shot for John Rahm here at 14, currently at 16 under par. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he'll have a hard time getting that up and down, and he has to do it. And now back a hole, Shoffley left is just on the edge. Did DJ learn anything from that similar shot, Bill? Third shot for Dustin Johnson, right of the green, 58 feet chipping here at 13. That lands on the putting surface, and that doesn't release. Oh, my goodness, both players with now long, long par putts. Here at number 13, and the drama continues to build here on the back nine. I did not see either one of those shots coming. They both had perfect lies, and the first cut of rough ball was sitting up. And after seeing what Shoffley did, I thought that might even help DJ, and he did the exact same thing, just kind of eased up, and they've come up Mark, uh, a lengthy distance from the hole. This is the second easiest hole on the back nine. I'm looking at numbers. There have not been any bogeys there today. The two in the final group, top two in the leaderboard, may walk away with fives at one of the easier holes in a tough back nine. Yeah, it's a little surprise. Uh, then again, you know, it's getting more and more tense for everybody. No one is exempt from that pressure. And I'm not saying it was caused by pressure, but it was caused by missing the fairway. Both of them missed the fairway, and you're just, you're, uh, you're in trouble if you do that here this week. And, uh, you know, you drop one there. You know what's coming up? 14, and then 15. And things getting tighter and tighter by the moment. So a battle of two long par putts 
for both DJ and Xander Shoffley. If either one makes that, it's going to feel like a birdie for them. Both may start coming back to Justin Thomas and John Rahm behind them, Bill. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this leaderboard here. There's a scoreboard just to the right of the green, so everybody knows where they stand. And if these putts don't fall, there'll be four guys chasing the leader within five shots. Shoffley ready to go 24 feet for par here at 13. Fairly straight putt. Has this online now. It's going to run out of steam. Didn't hit it hard enough, so after those two really good birdies at 11 and 12, Xander is going to make his first bogey of this Monday afternoon. He's back to 17 under. Yeah, it takes a little bit of the wind out of the sails after you said the birdies on 11 and 12, and you get to one of the easier holes on this nine. And as Earl said, I had not looked at that stat. It shocks me that no one has made bogey, but now we've got our first bogey. And DJ's got outside 20 feet to avoid a second one. Let's go to 14. We know how tough that is, Carney. And John Rahm on the left greenside bunker, 98 feet. Green is elevated. He's 7 for 7 in sand saves so far this week. But this is tough because it's uphill the whole way. This lane's about halfway to the hole now, chasing up there, working a little left and just past the hole. And that's pretty good. Yeah, good shot. That's some good five shot. feet or so. It'll be downhill, but that is a good bunker shot for John Rahm, trying to go eight for eight and stay at 16 under here at 14. Yeah, that was good. I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe it's in the DNA of our Spanish golfers, but uh, going back to Semi and Olafable and so many, Sergio, all really good around the greens and really good out of the bunkers, and that was a really a good play. Just creativity and, you know, an up and down there on a tough par four. He may be picking up a shot on DJ, Bill. Well, here we go. Our leader, 21 feet for par here at 13. As they scouted this, they were looking at the right edge of the cup as a aim point. Pulls the trigger. Lots of speed to the cup and in. That ball was motoring. If that ball didn't hit the cup, that might have gone off the green. <laughs> what a save and a little fist pump from DJ and why not? He'll stay 20 under. Gigantic. Oh, my. If you ever look back and say, what was the point that I steadied the ship in? Bill is right. That ball hits the back of the hole. We're looking at a replay. Goes up in the air and around like a backboard shot in basketball off the front rim and in. Wow, what a big time to do that. And I was thinking the same thing. That ball had a lot of speed, and it's going through our mind. That better hit the cup, and it just caught the edge. And I'd say most of the time that's going to spin out. That one fell for DJ. Man, what a run in the FedEx Cup playoffs. What a week, and those are the kind of things that end up with big shiny trophy at the end of the day. Let's go to Doug Bell. Here at 14, Justin Thomas from 28 feet sends the putt out to the left, swinging back to the right, but not enough. He played way too much break on that one, and he's out there about two and a half, maybe three feet by the hole, so needs to make that to stay at 17 under. All pars in the car to the second nine for Justin Thomas. Well, Justin Thomas now in a tie for second. Xander Shoffley drops back to 17 under and with a huge 20 foot par save at 13 DJ's extended the lead back to three with five holes to go Mark Carnival you know, with that treacherous par 3 15th coming up John Rahm can't afford to miss this one a little five footer downhill for par here at 14 this may try to work a little bit to his right but this is all about picking the right line back through ball down towards the cup and in and John Rahm is 8 for 8, and Sam saves a nice par save here at 14 to stay at six, 16 under. Well, and, and that happening even puts more emphasis on how important that, that putt of Dustin Johnson's was, because he would have had three guys, you know, two shots behind. But uh, as it is, he uh, maintains that 20 under score. And clean on the back nine, just stepped to the tee, Dustin Johnson. Didn't hit the fairway, but he's in good shape, all cut a little bit off the tee, but really hit it solid uh, and just the right first cut at the 14th hole, so he's in good shape, and Xander Shoffley, oh, just can't believe he dropped a shot at 13. Now he's got more ground to make up, three shots back with five to play. He's got driver as well. He'll take it more up the left-hand side. That ball needs to turn. I'm not sure it's turning back to the right. That could be missing way left, and it is. And it's through the trees, so it's through the pines, and it's settled down right at the rope line. 
Oh, my goodness. That's going to be a tough one to dig out from the heavy rough for Shoffley. Left at 14. Doug Bell. Here at 14, Justin Thomas cleaning up his par from three and a half feet and calmly rolls that into the center of the cup. Got to make those now and the home stretch. He stays at 17 under, headed to the par 315th. And someone needs to run now. Dustin Johnson, the lead is three through 13. Five holes to go. DJ in front, five holes away from the FedEx Cup PGA Tour radio coverage from Eastlake Golf Club in Atlanta. Continues final round of the Tour Championship. start this final round on a Monday. The lead was down to two a short time ago. It's three now for DJ with five holes to go at Eastlake Golf Club in Atlanta for the final round of the Tour Championship. Earl Forsey, Mark McCumber is our analyst. Let's head down to the 1992 PGA Tour Rookie of the Year, Mark Carnival. After the good par save at the 14th, John Rahm on the tee here at the 233-yard par 315th. Colin Morikawa and the previous group made an 11-footer for birdie for the bounce back. He's back to 15 under. Back left hole location. Rahm makes contact. This out to the right, turning left. This is on a good line. Lands front portion of the green. is going to chase back. Continuing to roll, and that'll be inside 25 feet for John Rahm. Looking for a birdie here at 15 to go to 17 under. We'll go back one hole to Bill. And Xander Shoffley, Earl, you called his tee shot way left off the tee here at 14. I stood behind the ball sitting way down in the rough, and there is a big pine in front of him. The trunk of the tree not going to bother him, but those tree branches, it's about 50 yards ahead of him, are right in his line to get to the green. So he's going to have to play something, try to hit a little right to left shot, or just hit a, try to hit a low runner here. So he swings away, and as soon as he hit it, he started walking. And I'm not exactly sure where that ball ended up. It is not close to the green. I think it just ended up in the fairway. Maybe 150 yards away. Detail play next. Yeah, he didn't have much of a shot after he put it there. I mean, you just can't drive it there. And that hole doesn't allow you to recover from that deep rough, Bill. All right. First cut. DJ, second shot. Here at 14. 215. And this lands out. Oh, what a shot. It's going to run by the hole on the left side, but that's a beauty. He's going to be in that 15 to 17 foot range, but that's a great shot. Looking for birdie on one of the toughest holes on the course. Well, it's exactly what he did yesterday, Earl. He hit the most beautiful drive and eight iron in there and made birdie. And boy, oh boy, he has got the first part of this hole accomplished. A pretty good good two shots right there. Yeah, in control right now on the back nine. The leader, Dustin Johnson, Doug Bell. Next at the par 315th, Justin Thomas. He's 17 under par, still looking for his first birdie on this second nine. Just said hi to PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan, who's out here watching the action, walking around, gave me a thumbs up. I mean, how much fun is this? And JT would know when to speak of since his tee shot on the way, up and over the water, and that's going left. That's headed for the bunker on the left side. And that flies into the bunker down to the flat part of the bunker and he's going to have to get up and down to stay at 17 under par here at 15 Justin Thomas well much better in the bunker than the left of the bunker you find the penalty area and that's almost uh, you know uh, you're looking right in the face of a double bogey if you do that since Dustin Johnson has beaten the 14th hole you know tee to green he's still got a, a putt but it's a makeable birdie putt it's uphill so it shouldn't be any problem one more really crucial shot before he gets to that last three hole stretch he's facing that in about 15 minutes the tee shot on number 15 and yeah, putt G dj has almost the same putt was made for birdie by sung jm bill well now the third shot guys for xander shoffley it's 130 yards we're at 14 he hit his tee shot way left and uh, just did yeoman's work to get it in the short grass he worked so hard to cut the gap to a couple of shots, but bogeyed the last, and now he's going to have to make an up and down from 130 yards. And, of course, DJ has a really good look for birdie here. So a key shot in this round for Xander Shoffley to stay in the hunt. Contact made. Telling it to get down. It does. That's nicely done. 
It's inside 10 feet. Xander Shoffley, chance to make par. That would keep him alive. Yeah, that was a really good wedge in there. He's left it again. It's not just getting inside of 10 feet that's important on these greens. It's being on the right side of the hole. He's below the hole, putting back up the hill, and uh, he's got a great chance. Well, he does, in a hole where not a lot of players have had good chances. As I mentioned, the Sung J.M. Uh, birdie near where D.J. Uh, is going to putt from just above the hole. He's the only other one to get one inside 15 feet. D.J.'s right around 15 feet. Sung J.M. was... 13 feet, 8 inches. That was the best shot of the day. So DJ just uh, hit the best shot of the day on the toughest hole of the day and the week. And he makes birdie here to go back up by 4 with 4 to go. He's going to be back in control again if he isn't already. You know, it's exactly what happened yesterday. Think about it. No one had made a birdie on that front left hole location the whole day. And playing in front of him, Justin Thomas made birdie. And he made the second birdie today right behind him. There's only been one birdie today by Sung J.M. And if if he can make this one, he'll be the only other birdie. That's really answering the call on what has been the hardest hole in the golf course year after year. Yeah, one birdie today, 535. But... You know, that back hole location, DJ certainly has a power in the distance, and he can just play that cut, and he did. Man, that's a, I mean, it's a gorgeous shot, and, you know, it may be the first of many steps here down the stretch toward a march, possibly toward his first FedEx Cup title and uh, capping off a great playoff run and what's been a terrific finish for this season for the guy who comes in this week, came in number one in FedEx Cup points number one in the world and may be solidifying that today, Doug Bell. Uh, Justin Thomas only his second missed green of the day. He's 13 out of 15 now. Green's hitting regulation. Left green side bunker here at 15. Does not put the glove on for these shots. Wide stance. Blade wide open. Still does the pre-shot waggle. Shadow cast right over the top of the golf ball. A lot of green to work with. Coming up and out of that bunker. Lands on the dance floor. Hops forward. Rolls out. Pass the hole and nestles in there about five feet from the cup. So he'll need that to stay at 17 under par and keep this. And this to remain at 17 under par. Long time over the ball. Now sends this to the cup and that goes in. What a big save for Xander Shoffley. Huge four. He's 17 under. And now Doug Bell, Justin Thomas for a par. Here at 15. Huge putt for Justin Thomas at this stage of the game. The six-footer on the white tracking, and into the bottom it goes. So Justin Thomas, a beautiful up and down from that bunker to say it's 17 under. Boy, I tell you, I'd love to ask him if he were to go on to win this. I think he thought he missed that to the right. The body language makes me think, and he's right now having the funniest look on his face like, whew, I thought I missed it. We're watching a replay now and on our monitor, and he looks like, oops, I made it. Two great par putts, though, by the closest pursuers to Dustin Johnson. That keeps the battle going. It ain't over, folks. When facing inclement weather, our team relies on Gus Buster umbrellas, the number one umbrella in golf because it's unflippable, unflappable, and unleakable and winds exceeding 55 miles per hour. Gus Buster's award-winning design is wind tunnel tested and it was named the year's best golf umbrella for wind resistance by golf.com. If you want to purchase a Gus Buster umbrella, visit a golf retailer near you or shop online at amazon.com. You're listening to exclusive coverage of the Tour Championship, the final event of the FedEx Cup playoffs from historic East Lake Golf Club in Atlanta, Georgia. And as we do at the top and bottom of every hour in our live play-by-play coverage, time now for a leaderboard update presented by Titleist. Once again, it's a leaderboard full of players trusting Titleist with 70% of the field relying on the speed, precision, and consistency of the Pro V1 and Pro V1X. Titleist, the number one ball in golf. Dustin Johnson, three up, four to play. He's 20 under par, one under through 14 today. Justin Thomas, Sanders Shoffley are tied for second, minus 17. John Rahm, three to go, 16 under and four back. Colin Morikawa, like Rahm, three under through 15. He's at 15 under, five behind. Scotty Scheffler wrapping up a great rookie season, four under with two to play. He's sixth by himself. 13 under, and Tyrrell Hatton, great season for him, early season win, and a 66 to close it out today, tied for seventh with the reigning FedEx Cup champ, Rory McIlroy at 12 under, eight shots back. Mark Carnival. After sliding his birdie putt by here at the 15th, John Rahm, four par to stay at 16 under. 
just above the hole here at 15. Down the slope, working left to right, and rattles in. So a good par save for John Rahm. He remains 16 under. Stay at the 16. And a few holes to go there. You're going to need a birdie run. There have been some at 16 and 17, 10 of them today at the par 5. 18, still no eagles at that closing par 5, though. Bill Rosinski to you. The 15th, the par 3, playing 233 yards. Dustin Johnson on the tee. This is airborne. Of course, water all the way around the screen. This lands on the back half and kicks left. This is a nice shot. This is a superb shot for Dustin Johnson. Ends up just past hole high right. A long, makeable birdie putt. He has parred every hole so far on the back nine. He's our leader at 20 under. I can't tell you how impressive that was. I've stand, I've stood on that tee before. All of East Lake is out to your right. All you see is water in a spot of green. He knocked it right on there, Bill. All right, Xander Shoffley on the tee. Get it on the green. Give you a chance here at this tough par three. This one is in the air as well. Climbing up. Get up on the green. There it is. That's fine. That's going to bounce up towards the middle of the putting surface. Back left hole location. That's fine. Safely on the on land here at 15. DJ, still our leader at 20 under. Let's go up a hole to, uh, a hole to Doug Bell. Thanks, Bill. Here at 16, Colin Morikawa has a 16-footer for par save to stay at 15 under. Putting through his shadow. The ball streams through that shadow, rolls up to the hole. And no, it won't go down. Stay just outside right of the cup. So, unfortunately, a bogey set up for a wayward tee shot by Colin Morikawa, and he's back to 14 under par, 2 under for the day. Yeah, this young player, what a great year he's had. A, a reigning PGA champion, won the only major played in the 2019-20 season, uh, but uh, not going to get it done today, but still, what a great championship and his first time here to East Lake for the uh, Tour Championship. Rory McIlroy just closed with a bogey at 18, so he's going to finish the day three under with a 67. 11 under for the week. His reign as FedEx Cup champion for a second time in his career is about to come to an end in the next hour or so. Dustin Johnson right now is the leader by three as we continue PGA Tour radio coverage on the back nine at East Lake final round of the Tour Championship. We all want to improve our golf game to reach the next level. But what about when it comes to your business? Well, Morgan Franklin Consulting does just that. Morgan Franklin Consulting is a national management advisory firm that works with finance, technology, and business leaders to tackle challenges and execute game-changing results. Visit MorganFranklin.com and check out their expert insights, latest trends, and more. Why wait to transform your business? Go to MorganFranklin.com today. That's Morgan Franklin. If you're a business owner with salespeople, how in the world could you say no to this offer? The top 20% of your salespeople close 80% of the business. 80% of all sales are closed after you don't go back to this morning. Back where I come from. Go ahead, back to Georgia. Back to this morning. Traditional finish in Atlanta, Georgia for the FedEx Cup playoff finale at the Tour Championship. Atlanta founded in 1837. A decade later, it was officially incorporated as the city of Atlanta, 1868. It was named the state capital of Georgia and longtime home for the Tour Championship, where a FedEx Cup champion, again, will be crowned within the next hour. And right now, Mark McCumber, it stands to be Dustin Johnson if he can hang on. He's done that today. Five-shot lead to start this final round. It was down to two at one point. It's now a three-shot lead for DJ with four holes to play, Doug Bell. Let's see if Justin Thomas can tack on a birdie. He hasn't had one in the second nine. 145 yards away here at the dogleg left, par four, 16th. Hole cut in the very front right-hand corner of this elevated green. And from where JT is, you can just see the top half of the flag stick. The play into the sky. And now comes down on the front part of that green, lands softly. That's an excellent shot for Justin Thomas. Around 12 feet. He'll have a good birdie look to get to 18 under par. And that's a perfect illustration of how valuable it is at the fairways to control the spin. And he does have an excellent chance. Why not just finish birdie, birdie, birdie? Put the pressure right back on Dustin Johnson. Yeah, still enough holes to get on a birdie run for not only Justin Thomas, but for Xander Shoffley, who's tied for second as well, Mark Carnival. 
Earl out here at the 16, John Rahm drove in the right rough, and that's not the only problem. There's a tree that's in front of him that he's got to maneuver around. So out of the rough, he's got to get this ball working left to right. And the only way he's going to be able to get this close is if he lands it short of the green. There's a little runway up to this elevated green. Rom now pitches it out there. This working left to right. This needs a big hop, though. And that finds the left green side bunker. That's actually a lot better than it would have been in the rough. But an elevated green, unlikely birdie for John Rom here. But he is 8 for 8. And sand safe so far this week, playing the 16th at 16 under. Yeah, we'll move back onto that par three at 15. Bill Brzezinski to you. Well, Xander Shoffley now trying to stay in the hunt here. Great par save at 14. And now here at the par three, 15th uphill, 26 foot putt for birdie. If it goes in, he'll be 18 under par. Ball is moving. This has a good looking line to it, and then it turned left. And that's a couple of feet away, so. See if he's going to finish. Uh, looks like he's going to put a mark on this. Uh, a couple of feet away to stay minus 17. I'll tell you what, 17 is still going to be three back, and Dustin Johnson has the opportunity here to really kind of cement the lead you would love to have because you certainly can't count out that uh, ahead of him. Justin Thomas can't birdie the last three. You'd love to make this one, and then you really are in totally control no matter what someone else does if you par the last three. DJ started to take control again, regained it with three birdies and a four-hole stretch on the front. Hasn't made one, though, since number six, Bill. Yeah, lots of pars, and uh, right now that's a good thing. Maybe you can make birdie here at 15. Just past hole high right in this back left location. 15-footer for birdie on the way. Got a stretch to the cup. Oh, my goodness, that was so good. It just missed left. Staring at the line. That would have been a little bit more cushion with three to go. He should be able to knock this in and stay 20 under. Yeah, it would have been a nice cushion, but a three on that hole, I think you'd take it before you hit the shot and walk right over to the 16th tee. Back up to Mark Carnival. And not a terribly difficult bunker shot other than the fact that the green sits eight feet above where he is standing. John Rahm has about 22 feet of green to work with. This lands just over the fringe, chasing towards the hole, out to the left, turning right. It just turns too far right. Now this young man is money out of the bunkers. That is inside two feet. He'll be able to save his par here at 16. John Rahm will stay at 16 under. He's come closer to making bunker shots than guys have to making birdies from putting. I mean, he almost hold that out nine for nine this week. Yeah, you know, think back to the 74, that struggle he had coming in in round two, and he mentioned the best look at birdie he had all day was that bunker shot. He almost hold at 18, the par five, and he's been doing that all week. And, wow, that would have gotten him within three. And now starting to run out of holes as well as Dustin Johnson, even with the miss uh, for birdie at 15 going to be a three-shot lead for him with three holes to go, so he can start checking boxes now, but you know, Justin Thomas is one of those guys tied for second at 17 under, and he was a guy that had a three-shot lead with three to play way back at the Workday Charity Open and didn't walk away with the title at the end of the day, so a lot can happen down the stretch, especially with a par five to finish. Yeah, This is a big, big, big putt. You know, it's no more important than the first one you had on on the first day, I understand that, but coming down the stretch here, if Justin Thomas can hold this putt right here, the one he's got on 16 from just outside of 11 feet, 11 feet, 1 inches, the absolute fight is on. And he came out of the blocks today, birdied five of his first seven to kind of set notice he's going to be there all day, Doug Bell. Big putt here at 16, Justin Thomas, 11 feet. Again, the shadow streaming across the line. Fast putt. Settling in the stroke. Here it comes at the hole. And into the bottom for Justin Thomas. His first birdie in this second nine. He moves to 18 under par. Oh, my. This is unbelievable. That was his first birdie of the back nine. And uh, Dustin Johnson has not had one yet on the back nine. Now, two-shot lead is not any way yet secure. Now, DJ doesn't know it, but that lead again, you said, down to two as he is on the tee now at 16. Ball in the air, and this one's in flight. Headed up the left-hand side, missed the fairway, fairway bunker. At 16 for Dustin Johnson. So here we go. Lead down to two, and DJ misses the fairway at 16. 
Yeah, I'll tell you what, he also went with driver. A lot of players have gone with three wood because it widens the fairway, but he was aggressive. Talking about three woods, Xander Shoffley is going off the same hole 16 with a three wood from the left side of the fairway to play his draw. Starts his ball down the right side looking a little bit anxiously. Did it hang out to the right? Well, he's bending down for the tee, which would make me think it's found the right side of the fairway, and it has. That's in a great spot right there. And DJ, not in the short grass. Missed fairway with his lead cut a moment ago to two by Justin Thomas. So, work to do with three holes to go for Dustin Johnson on the back nine in Atlanta as we continue our coverage from the Tour Championship on PGA Tour Radio. It'll be a, a miraculous break, and he'll have to hit a miraculous shot to do it. This could be a lot of trouble right here uh, for Justin Thomas. Yeah, when he's going to need at least one, maybe two birdies coming in, maybe eagle at 18. But the fact is he had just tightened things up with a birdie at 16 to get within two of Dustin Johnson, who has three to play. And before we uh, took a quick timeout, Dustin Johnson had missed his tee shot left at the 16 so he's in the fairway bunker there there has been one player hit a tee shot in that fairway bunker make par but things had just tightened up and then justin thomas flared that way out to the right up ahead at 17 bill well xander shoffley with that good tee shot here at the dog leg left par 4 16th right edge of the fairway 147 yards Elevated green and that flag, like so many have been here in this uh, championship day final round, front hole location. This is front right, and he decides to back off. Shoffley had birdies at 11 and 12. That got him within two of DJ, but then he had that bogey at 13. Great save at 14 to stay in the mix, and uh, two putted for par at the par 315. So let's see if he can get this close. Again, right side of the fairway from 147 yards away. Hardly a breeze right now. Perfect late afternoon here in Atlanta. This one's high in the air. This looks to be a pretty good-looking golf shot. It's going to land hole high left and stick. And that's outside 15 feet. That's a chance for birdie for Xander Shoffley. Yes, it is. Uh, he'll have a lengthy one, but uh, DJ's got to carry a lip here coming up to knock this one on the green, Bill. 120 for DJ climbing. That's got to go. Stretch, and it gets over that bunker and lands on the green. That ball's going to be right next to Xander Shoffley's. What a shot by Dustin Johnson. That just cleared the bunker by three or four yards, landed on the collar, and then kicked closer inside uh, Shoffley's golf ball. What a play by DJ. I, t I tell you what else. Not only is it what a play, that's that natural talent along with a lot of strength that he's worked hard to attain the athleticism we're looking at a replay where he bombs down on a wedge and that ball cleared that grass lip by maybe an inch he was begging for it to go and it lands on the fringe and now worked back toward the hole that was a gutsy shot wow it takes strength to do that and he has not when he's gotten into some issues i've brought it up all week he's been really taking the prudent plays and not taking too much on well, we're late on a Sunday, and there's a FedEx Cup waiting for him at 18 if he can win this tournament. That was a little risk taken on and rewarded there for Dustin Johnson at 16. Yeah, depending on what happens with uh, Justin Thomas's tee shot. Where but the fact is we have not had any Eagles today. 11 birdies at 18, three bogeys, but no Eagles at that finishing par five. I'm surprised at that because uh, I think it's the easiest hole location, the back left, to make Eagle. Uh, you know, maybe someone's due in this last two groups to make an eagle. And he may need it for sure. And, and no real attempts. Only one player has been on in two. They're at 18 today, Bill. All right, Xander Shoffley again with a chance for birdie. We're at 16 green. And this is a 22-foot putt across the screen from left to right. Front right hole location. Starts this out to the left. This has a nice-looking line to it. This is a really good-looking putt. He's going to walk it in for birdie. Xander Shoffley to 18 under par. What did Scotty say to Captain Kirk? <laughs> We're not dead yet. Well, it's not just Justin Thomas who can make the run. Now, all of a sudden, Xander is within two and uh, puts pressure right back on Dustin Johnson. That was a really good Scotty imitation. Doug Bell? Justin Thomas from underneath the pine trees right here at 1,765 yards away. Hits a punch shot. 
that rolls down the fairway and now keeps rolling, scampers through the shadows and into that front bunker. Rolls up the top of the bunker and then back down into the bottom of the bunker. And it'll be a long bunker shot. He's got a lot of green to play with. Justin Thomas out here at 17. I'll tell you what, Doug, I think that's exactly what you called and what he tried to do. I mean, give it a lot of speed, get it to the bunker. He's got a great chance to hold out of the bunker, and he knows that. Boy, and these two, Justin Thomas, Sandra Shoffley, really from the get-go today, Mark McCumber, and they're still there down the stretch here, at least giving DJ something to think about, both within two of the lead. Well, you got to get uh, hats off to those two players. They're both 400 par for the day. Uh, Dustin Johnson hasn't played poorly, hasn't driven it quite as well. I think the tee shot coming up on 17 is a very important tee shot for all these remaining players, or both the remaining players. We saw what happened to Justin Thomas. Uh, this has turned out to be a really exciting finish, and we're not about to be done yet. No, a tight finish. Still that par 5 coming up at 18. An opportunity to make birdies at 17 and 18, but... DJ's got a chance here at 16 to tack on another one, Bill. Yeah, this is a very similar line that uh, Shoffley had, so a little bit closer, 20 feet. And we'll turn to his right. Starts the ball left edge, crawl into the hole. That's got us hold the line, and it does not It misses on the right. That was really good, but not good enough. Okay, he's going to tap it in. That's a par. Nothing but pars on the backside for DJ. Off to 17. His lead is two. Yeah, I think he and his brother Austin thought that ball would tumble just a little to the left. I did too, but it never did. It held its line. Still two-shot lead with two to play. You'd like to have that starting the week, but uh, all the pressure is still on all three of these players. Well, Marky did have the two-shot lead to start the week. That's how we began things. <laughs> Dustin Johnson, 10 under, two up on John Rahm. So all this golf that's been played, and with two to go, it's a two-shot lead for DJ with two holes to go, two away possibly from his first win at the Tour Championship and first FedEx Cup. Yeah, I did a lot on the line. You talk about the golf's ultimate prize is to win the FedEx Cup, a combination of a real solid season, uh, the wraparound schedule, and to go with a great playoff schedule. I don't think that we could ask for any more. Uh, the fact that he's had two wins and two seconds in the last four events shows how good he's playing. 17 now, Mark Carnival. Uh, John Rahm drove it left in the left rough and was trying to get into that front bunker, but the ball came up short in the first cut of rough. He's got 30 yards. He's got to carry this at least 15 to get over and onto the green. Then a green kind of runs away to his right. So this actually, if he can get enough spit on this and control it, this ball could get really close. Pitches it onto the green, now checks, now working towards the hole. This on a pretty good line, working up towards the hole and just misses to the right. That was a heck of an effort for John Rahm. That'll result in a par. He should stay at 16 under with a par here at 17. Yeah, you know, we cover these guys week in, week out, and I just can't get over how good they are at scoring. You know, some people think, I think, if you don't follow golf closely, oh, these guys go out and hit. They hit all the greens and fairways. Well, they don't. The best players in the world still have to scramble, and we've seen some great short game play. John Rahm, 9 for 9 in bunkers. And now Justin Thomas would love to have a hole out right here. I can tell you what, Doug. Well, it's perfect lie, 78 feet away, a lot of green to play with. Again, no glove on these bunker shots. Sends it up onto the dance floor, now catches the slope and rolls down towards the hole. And rolling out towards the hole and slides by the right side. And he's yelling at it, barking at it to slow down and stop. And it finally did. That's 10 feet by. It's going to have to hit that putt to stay at 18 under here at 17. He does need to make that putt, but back on the tee on 17, Xander Shoffley goes to the far left side of the fairway, could have hit a draw off this tee, uh, and he wants to find the fairway. It's a drawing. Is it going to draw too much? He's looking anxiously. There's bunkers over there and rough, and it, uh, I can't tell if it's in the shadow, whether it caught the edge of the fairway or rough. We'll have to wait and see. I think it may have found the rough. Yeah, it was turning pretty hard to the left, trying to curl something around there. And he's being aggressive now. Two holes to play, two to catch DJ, two back. And he's trying to make something happen. Uh, Sandra Shoffley has today at four under par. Same round of golf that Justin Thomas is working on. Thomas has that par saver up ahead of the green. And DJ on the tee now, two to go. 20 under with a two-shot lead. Yeah, he's going off this tee with a three-wood, a three-metal, uh, fairway metal. 
and he did something I haven't seen in a long time, something Johnny Miller used to do, Lanny Watkins used to do, players in the previous generation kind of kicked up the dirts, not using a tee, uh, keep that ball low to the ground. It's, it kind of helps you hit it straight. Now from the right side of the tee, he takes a mighty rip, and he goes. He doesn't have to bend over for the tee. He just steps on that divot, and it looks perfect, and it is. Wow, what a good tee shot under pressure for a man who has missed uh, quite a few fairways in the last hour and a half. And now up ahead of the green there, Justin Thomas for a huge must-par save, Doug. He's got seven feet of real estate remaining for an up and down from that front bunker to stay at 18 under par. He's looked at it from all angles. Should turn from right to left, shadow streaming off behind the ball. Locks on the target, and the stroke sends it up at the hole, and that misses right. And missed on the high side, and so Justin Thomas, the way we tee shot will cost him the bogey after the birdie at 16, and he's back to 17 under par. Oh, boy, what a letdown. I know the feeling after making the birdie on 16 to get within two, and then you make an unforced error on the 17th hole. And you got to look at uh, to miss it to the right there on a hole that's not one of the hardest holes. It's the seventh easiest hole in the course, and he's going to walk to the 18th. Now, eagle may not be enough. You're listening to exclusive coverage of the Tour Championship, the final event of the FedEx Cup playoffs from historic East Lake Golf Club in Atlanta, Georgia. And as we do at the top and bottom of every hour in our live play-by-play coverage, time now for a leaderboard update brought to you by MasterCard. Tap and go with your MasterCard, the simple, secure way to pay. Just a two-shot lead for Dustin Johnson with two to go. It was a five-shot cushion to start the day, and things are coming down to the final two holes in Atlanta. Dustin Johnson, 20 under par in that final pair with him. Xander Shoffley coming off birdie at 16. He's 18 under. He missed the fairway left. It's in one of the three fairway bunkers left of the fairway, so Shoffley is going to have a challenge to stay within two. Right now, solo second, 18 under. Justin Thomas drops one, 17 under with one to play. He's three back now, headed to the par five at 18. John Rahm headed there as well at 18, four behind. Not going to be the week it looks like for John Rahm to win the FedEx Cup title. He's had a great playoff run, though. Winner last week, he's 16 under and four back. Rookie Scotty Scheffler wraps up a great rookie season with a five under 65 today, 14 under for the Tour Championship for him. And Colin Morikawa sits at 13 under. Tyrrell Hatton, a nice finish today, 66, solo seventh, minus 12. Yeah, Patrick Reed shot a fine 65 in the closing round of the season here at the Tour Championship. Finished 11 under, tied for eighth, along with Rory McIlroy. The only disappointment for Rory is that he bogeyed this par five, which is a birdie hole. He finished stranded for the day to get to that score. And you got to mention one other player, Webb Simpson. Webb Simpson, a past Open champion, a U.S. Open champion, a past Players champion, shot a two under par 68 to get to nine under. A tie for 12th, and it appears that Webb Simpson will win two very prestigious awards. They're all going to be settled today. The PGA of America's Varden Trophy and the PGA Tour's Byron Nelson Award for the lowest adjusted scoring average for the season. That's quite an honor. To Doug Bell. The Corn Ferry Tour visited Panther Creek Country Club in Springfield, Illinois last week for the 5th Annual Lincoln Land Championship presented by LRS. And yesterday, 29-year-old Brett Druitt of Australia won for the first time in 116 starts. Next up on the path to the PGA Tour is the Evans Scholars Invitational beginning Thursday just outside Chicago. While on PGA Tour Champions, the chase for the Charles Schwab Cup visits Sioux Falls, South Dakota for the Sanford International beginning on Friday. Xander Schauffele, two back, playing into 17 from the fairway bunker, Bill. Yeah, and the, the lie is good, but uh, just a tough shot. Splash of sand, ball coming out, and you got a back right hole location. That's going to come up short of the green, short right of the putting surface. So, uh, again, if you can't hit the fairway here at Eastlake, you'll probably pay a price, and he's going to have to make an up and down for par. And now Dustin Johnson down the right side of that fairway, 126. And he plays away. Again, the hole is located in the back right portion of this putting surface going right at it. That's another good play by DJ. Just below left of the hole. And he's inside 15 feet for birdie. 
Boy, he's playing like a very mature veteran, uh, number one player in the world. Why why take on that whole location that's so narrow over there? He played out to the batter part of the green, leaves himself inside at 20 feet. Because he's playing with the closest pursuer, Xander Shoffley, who missed the green. So most likely he's going to have to work hard just to make par. Isn't it interesting? The, the two guys who played the best chasing, the two closest pursuers, Shoffley and Thomas, both struggling on the second to last hole, number 17. Yeah, well, they had to get on it from the get-go, and they really did. But you, your margin for error starting so far back, uh, chasing the guy you were chasing, and Dustin Johnson having that big lead, I mean, any little mistake, and it, it can cost you. And, you know, for Justin Thomas, a couple of bogeys on the front, that cost you one at 17. Now some late miss fairways for Shoffley. Yeah, we go up to the 18th green from the French, Colin Morikawa putting from behind the hole for birdie. He's presently 13 unders. The ball's on the way, rolling toward the hole, and it goes by slow down ball. He's looking anxiously as that runs probably outside of five feet, right around the five feet a number. So he will not make birdie. The best he can do is make par, and if he can make that, he'll be in solo sixth, finishing at 13 under. And he made a run today, made a good charge, but then back nine, he started running out of gas. Trying to make things happen. Bogey's at 14, 16, and 17 for Morikawa. So uh, that's what happens. So you push a little too hard at East Lake, and this is a tough back nine. It pushes back. Yeah, it, it defends itself very well. But they had to push. You're right, Earl. And, you know, I, I'm really impressed with what the Chasers did. You know, they, they put some pressure on Dustin. Justin Thomas got to find a way to get on in two, try to make an eagle here. Big tee shot is needed at 18, and that's just cutting a little to the right. That looks terrific as it hits just over the slope and it's going to run down the fairway. Great shape for Justin Thomas as that thing rolls out and down the slope. He'll try to go for the green in two and make a three at 18, Bill. All right, Xander Shoffley, uh, about 10 yards short of the green here at number 17 and i think he might have been distracted yes there was someone walking and that's the issue here you have on the tour there's no fans so the people that are, are mo moving around the golf course uh, do catch the golfer's eye so uh, shoffley backs off and now with wedge in hand it's about 10 yards short of the green pins all the way back right really needs to make an up and down here and go at the 18th the par five this is a nice little chip shot this might go in no it slides right Ooh, that was a good play all right got a little bit of work left but that could be another good up and down par for xander shoffley trying to hang in at 18 under that's outstanding that is an outstanding pitch and he's got a very makeable putt and the way he's been putting i expect him to make it he's going to try to keep dj very honest because if he can go to that 18th tee only two down that's not unusual to flip a two-shot swing with one hole to play, and he keeps himself alive. Boy, that was just a nice little spinner in there, and it's given himself, like you said, Mark, really absolutely has to have a par to stay two behind here. And even with a par, Dustin Johnson's going to have a great look for birdie coming up. Back up to 18, this little putt right inside of five feet from Morikawa for par, and he knocks it in. What a great first full year. He played some last year and actually won last year, but he's going to finish at one under par, 13 under, and tied for six. Now back to 17, Dustin Johnson for birdie. That could come close to sealing the deal here if he knocks it in for a three-shot lead, Bill. Yeah, doing a lot of work here on this green, uh, Dustin uh, doing some work here and uh, Mark do you like what you see with he and Austin they take it I don't care if it's five feet or 30 they've got their routine down here and they do not vary uh, Dustin goes behind the, the hole and then uh, Austin will walk it now DJ coming back behind the ball uh, this is uh, a very a tedious uh, when it comes to getting ready to putt but what do you think of their routine I'll tell you what I like about it they took take an extraordinary amount of time but he takes no time anywhere else so he's not a slow player he can afford to do this his group isn't out of position but it, but it's orchestrated bill it's the same every time that i like it's called routine just routine wasn't that that was in uh, white christmas the movie when the general is a just routine sir all right here's dj just outside 17 feet this for birdie here at number 17 to go to a three-shot lead down the slope makes its way to the cup and runs out of steam just breaks off to the right he's got using the right hand to push the ball further but that didn't work 
And he's going to put a coin on this. That might be one of the worst cuts so, uh, he said all day. But, but I understand that the last thing he wanted to do there, the last thing was run it by because it was downhill. So he came up short, but he should have no trouble making his par, knowing that at the worst he'll have a two-shot lead. To Doug Bell. Justin Thomas, solid drive here at 18. 240 to the front of the screen, 255 hole. Ball on a little bit of a down slope. Of course, everything's downhill coming off that tee here at 18 at East Lake Golf Club. And JT's right leg a little bit above his left leg. And the swing sends it on the way, moving it from left to right. Watching this ball lands in front of the green and then rolls up. A little opening over that left side, but not quite up on the putting surface. Just short of the green. Line two. And has plenty of green to play with to try to get up and down for a closing birdie. Yeah, where he is, though, Doug, is a bit below the green. He does have enough green, but he's going to have to a, a, a perfect little pitch. And he's got to hold out. That's the big thing. He's got to hold out to keep any hopes alive. Just no one getting home in two. One player today at 18, Bill. A big putt for Xander Shoffley, four-footer for par here at 17 to stay two back of Dustin Johnson, who did tap in for his par. And he knocks it home. All right, going to the 18th on a Monday. Can DJ hold on? Let's go to 18 now. Mark Carnival to you. Yeah, good tee shot here at the par 5, 18th for John Rahm. 227 to this, call it a back right, left hole location. He's got 212 to the front of the green. If he lands it on the green... It may be difficult to hold the green. Rahm at 16 under. Trying to make a three here. Or maybe better. Rahm, pretty flat lie. Draws the club back. Makes contact. This starts a little bit to the right. Trying to get this ball to turn over left. That ball lands just over the fringe on the right. And that's going to chase to the back of the green. And get maybe to the back fringe. That's going to be a tough downhill putt. But it will be for you for John Rahm outside of 30 feet here at 18. Rahm currently at 16 under. Yeah, I think that may have turned out a bit, little better than he expected. One hand flew off the club, Karn, as he made contact. Trying to hit a high draw in there. Got it started on the right line, but didn't quite turn it over. Still an outside chance to make eagle. Yeah, at least he's going to get a putter on it, and not very many players have been able to do that today at the finishing par 5. This change made 2016 uh, to switch the nines around. A tournament, a tour championship used to end at the difficult long par 3 ninth hole. Now ends at this par 5 today, and uh, these players coming in, Justin Thomas, John Rahm, Xander Shoffley, they all need eagles, and maybe that's not going to be enough this week to catch Dustin Johnson, but... The final two are on the tee there now, and it's still only a two-shot lead for DJ over Shoffley, who's on the tee now, Mark. Yeah, he's on the right side of the tee. He likes to draw the ball. He's got driver, wants to get it all the way down to the bottom in the flat to leave himself uh, an easier second shot. Sandra Shoffley taking a final look. Standard setup. He starts this down the middle with the draw. That looks like it's on a great line, and that could be really downhill. He's exceptionally long. Oh, it just found the left rough, and it went down. It went down to the bottom. Boy, he's going to need some special to get it on the green from there. It doesn't look like it ended up very favorably. Well, and that's advantage Dustin Johnson. So Shoffley has had a case of missed fairways late. And now DJ on the tee. Might need just a par here coming in to win it. Yeah, far right side trying to hit a cut off this tee. Starts it down the left side cutting. I think it's going to find the fairway. It shouldn't be in any real trouble. It lands on the down slope. Oh, that's running out beautifully down where John Rahm was. He will have an iron to the screen. What a way to finish it off. The driver that let him down in round three, it boosted him, excuse me, in round two, boosted him in round three. It's giving him some challenges today, but he hit a great one when he needed it. And Dustin Johnson in great shape on the final hole, maybe one hole away from winning the FedEx Cup in 60 seconds. Imperial Headwear. For me, we've seen it before. It can grab your club, and that ball could end up in the water, which would end the day for you and end the week. So decisions back behind him is John Rahm. That was a lot longer attempt for Birdie than he was hoping for to finish off the week in what's been a great season and FedEx Cup playoffs for him, Carney. Well, you got to give him credit, Earl. I mean, that double bogey at four early on, and he could have easily just kind of just played through the rest of the round, but he battled back that birdie at five and eagle at six and he's battled all day now a 10 footer for birdie at 18 uphill to post 17 under ball should if anything move right 
Shadow now cast down his line as that put us away with plenty of pace up to the cup, and it dropped. A little fist punt for John Rahm. Obviously disappointed he won't win, but that's a good birdie at 18. He finishes currently in a tie for third at 17 under. Now I'll tell you what, uh, except for that a uh, little bit of a, a hiccup yesterday, he bogeyed 14, double 15, and all of a sudden he'd be right there. Good tournament for John Rahm. And now for Xander Shoffley, as uh, he plays from the left-hand rough, he's going to take a lofty club and just lay up. So that drive took any hopes of going for the green in two, and he's going to try to lay up short of that bunker. Hang on, and it does. You don't want to be in that bunker that short of the green there back in the fairway. So Shoffley, to make an eagle, he's going to have to hold one out, Doug Bell. Up here at 18, Justin Thomas, six feet for what he hopes is a closing birdie in his last putt of this 2019-20 PGA Tour season. Putting through his shadow, the birdie putt on the way at the hole. And dead center for Justin Thomas, who shoots his third 66 this week at the Tour Championship. Did have the 71 the second round. And he finishes at 18 under par. And what a season for the three-time winner, Justin Thomas. Yeah, what a season is right. you got to put, tip your hats to both John Rahm and Justin Thomas. The Chasers, they both shot 66 today. They made a valiant try to catch Dustin Johnson, but it appears that he will have played good enough, whether he shoots one under, two under, uh, that he's still going to hold on and win. But they made a run at him, and I guarantee you they got his heart beat up a little bit, if that's possible to get DJ's heart rate up. Yeah, would it go from one to two? I mean, you know, I mean, that's how it is. He's just so calm, steady. And he did stumble a bit at 7 and 8, kind of opened the door. It's been all pars in the back nine, which may be enough for DJ, Bill. Uh, 245, guys, is the number for Dustin Johnson. And he's selected a four iron, and his hole is on the far left side as he makes contact. Talking to it. Oh, that did not quite get up there. It's in the bunker. There is a bunker that's on the right side of the screen, front right. So that's where he is, but he is there in two. Right now with a two-shot lead over Xander Shoffley, who is uh, short of the last fairway bunker. It's about 50 yards away. He's short of that. He'll be hitting his third shot. Yeah, his ball landed a foot short of carrying to the green, came back off the grassy bank into the bunker. Here's, here's how it stacks up, though. That's the safest place you can be. Nothing funny should happen from there. And because of the fact that Shoffley had to lay up because of his drive in the rough, he has to hold this to put pressure back on Dustin Johnson. Because if he doesn't hold this... All he's got to do is make par from that bunker, which should be easy in the tournament. And the FedEx Cup is his. Two-shot lead. Walking up to the 18th will crown a FedEx Cup champion in 60 seconds. Introducing Titleist Tour Speed, where speed meets performance. The new multi-layer technology delivers the ball speed, distance, and short game control you need to play better. Faster than Callaway Chrome Soft, Bridgestone's Tour VRX, and TaylorMade Tour Response. Get new Titleist Tour Speed, or get left behind. Have you dreamt about going to the Players' Championship and seeing the world's best golfers take on iconic TPC Sawgrass? Enter the Golf Breaks by PGA Tour sweepstakes, and that dream could become a reality. Golf Breaks by PGA Tour is offering the chance for two people to go to the Players next March, including three nights accommodation with Saturday and Sunday passes to the tournament. Enter at theplayers.com slash contest. You could be watching the best players in the world at TPC Sawgrass. Enter today at theplayers.com slash contest. Dustin Johnson, two-shot lead, one to play. He's greenside bunker and two at the par 5, 18th. A shot or two or three away, possibly from his first career FedEx Cup title. He started the return to golf back in mid-June, 111th in FedEx Cup points. He missed the cut at the Charles Schwab Challenge, so after that first event back, he was 115th in FedEx Cup points, and he's about to be crowned FedEx Cup champion, Bill. Yeah, I remember what happened with DJ. Remember Memorial? He had back-to-back 80s. Then he went to 3M, shot 78 and W deed. And boy, did he regroup. My goodness, what a finish. And now Xander Shoffley knows what he has to do here at the finishing hole. He's got a hole out from 68 yards to have a chance. DJ's in the front right bunker in two. And this will be the third shot for Xander Shoffley. And really, this whole thing, you go back to that uh, 13th hole where uh, they both had long putts for par, and DJ made his, and Xander did not. 
Pops this in the air, lands about 20 feet short, and then it's going to check up. So a little closer to the wind for Dustin Johnson, and uh, Shoffley will have a birdie putt outside, uh, inside 20 feet. Yeah, it really does make him much closer to the wind. He was looking good anyway. Now you just dump this ball out of the green, let it release up to the hole. The only place you can't put this is over the green. Anywhere we're on the green between the bunker and the flag stick will be good, but I expect him to hit this close. He has played with confidence. He hasn't backed off ever today, and uh, here, here he goes, Bill. One final shot from off the green for him. Yep, out of the bunker, 63 feet away. This is in the air, scoots across the green. This is a pretty shot. Closing inside 10 feet and to about 6 feet away. Well done. That'll be for birdie for Dustin Johnson, closing in on his 23rd career victory. Yeah, that's exactly all he needed to do. Now he, now he can totally sit back and enjoy it. And we, when we talk about a dump and run, that's what he had the luxury to just get it out with a lot of sand. Don't get close to the ball. It doesn't go very far in the air, but it's going to roll further. Has no chance of getting in trouble. He performed it just like a FedEx Cup champion. Yeah, and he's about to take home that trophy as uh, he's been the man to beat really the entire FedEx Cup playoffs after the runaway easy win at the Northern Trust where kind of same scenario, had a five-shot lead and just kept adding to it, adding to it. Today was not the case. He had to work hard for it to get it done with all those great players making runs at him. Yeah, if you think about it, if he makes that putt, which he should, that'll be 68. That means that those players who shot 66, they would have had to shoot 63 today. No one has done that this week. So he shot a score that almost put it totally out of reach for any of the chasers, even though they put up a great fight. 23 wins for DJ. Once he finishes this off, he becomes the 27th player with 23 or more victories in his PGA Tour career and just keeps adding to what likely is going to be a Hall of Fame resume. He put a FedEx Cup trophy in the in the case, and that's certainly something that not many players have done. Dustin Johnson is about to win a Tour Championship and a FedEx Cup along with him. Yeah, you can already start etching his name on the Hall of Fame hardware. There's no question he's already earned that. I mean, uh, there's so many things he's done. He's never missed a FedEx Cup except one year when he did it with self-exile. He's won every year he's been on tour. He's been number one in the world. He's done all the things that you've got to do to be a world number one. And almost ran the table in these FedEx Cup playoffs. Came uh, playoff loss that John Rom bombed last weekend away from maybe winning all three, Bill. Well, here's a big putt for Xander Shoffley. 14 feet here at 18. This for birdie for solo second at 19 under par. Going to putt through his shadow here. And the ball is moving up to the cup. Good looking line. Oh, my goodness. That just went by on the right. So it will be a tie for second at 18 under par. A final round two under 68 for Xander Shoffley. And how about uh, his career here? Four trips, a win, a tie for second, and a second, and a tie for seventh. That's pretty good. It is, Bill, and I'm going to give him two shots better. How about 66 for the closing round? He has never shot a round worse than par here. DJ to finish it off, Bill. And here we go. Up the hill for birdie. And this to post 21 under par. And this would be to close with a birdie after eight pars on the backside. Shadow is right over the hole. A lot of the tour staff here at this championship behind the green to cheer him on. Putt to the cup and drops it in. Little fist bump. Birdie at the last for Dustin Johnson. And he is the winner of the 2020 Tour Championship. And with it captures the PGA Tour's ultimate prize, the FedEx Cup. He finishes at 21 under par, and that was three shots ahead of those who finished in second place. It was DJ all the way at East Lake as he wins for the 23rd time on the PGA Tour. And by the way, picks up a check for $15 million. Well, I'd say it was a good week, a good month, and a great year for Dustin Johnson. He clearly has shown why he's number one in the world and why he was number one in the FedEx Cup and uh, the winner of it. Wow, what, what an accomplishment. Well, with that birdie barrage, he started the FedEx Cup playoff with, with, with at the Northern Trust. It's only appropriate that he finishes with a birdie to cap it off. 
at the Tour Championship. What a performance by Dustin Johnson to capture the FedEx Cup title for the first time in his career and win the Tour Championship. Our broadcast team proud to don quality products and the following valued partners of PGA Tour Radio. Apparel provided by Cutter and Buck and PGA Tour Apparel. Hats from Imperial Headwear. Umbrellas provided by Gus Buster and Outerwear from FootJoy. If you didn't have access to a television or simulcast this afternoon, you can catch a re-air of today's